welcome to We Are Something Else presents Smoke and Spill. I'm your boy Kaleo. There's Big Mike. Welcome back. Welcome back. Mike, how's it going, brother? It's going good, man. You know, um, I guess, yeah, since last time, man, same old, same old, man. Just just taking care of business at home, man, working on some projects and stuff like that. But uh, it's a pleasure to be back, man. And um, we have a good one tonight, man. So I'm ready to ready to roll into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so if you're just tuning in, if you didn't watch the last episode, you may want to watch it. We did uh, Class Act starting Kid and Play. Um, we reviewed that. It was our first one. It was our pilot. Uh, we're finding our legs or whatever. But uh, it was a really good episode. Uh, if you haven't seen Class Act, definitely check it out. That's what we're doing. If you want to talk about movies you may have missed and some things you may not have noticed if you did watch the movie. Uh, but other than that, Mike, what, uh, what are you smoking on tonight? <laughs> Oh man, tonight, man, I got the uh, Viva La Horchata. You know, it, it's kind of giving me some uh, some West Coast vibes. I used to live out there for a while. Um, you know, I was a big Horchata fan, so I'm glad to nice. see it finally hit the uh, hit the hookah market. You know, and uh, it's a nice little flavor, man. It's got a nice little scent to it and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely gives me gives me those Horchata vibes back in the day, man. And uh, it's hey, it smokes well too. Absolutely. Okay. Anything special with the with the prep in it? Any any ice in the in the in the hose or Sprite? What you got? Oh man, I'm just keeping it basic tonight, man. Just just basic, just water, man. You know, uh, not not special tonight, man. Just uh, just enjoying the full flavor of it, man. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, man. But do next do, time, I'm gonna switch it up. You do cold water. I do cold water. Yeah, those, yeah. I, I think cold water work, works the best, man, as far as like getting some like solid pools and stuff like that, man. Yep. Um, if you're not going to use ice, man, cold water is definitely definitely a way to go. Absolutely. OK. And tonight uh, I have with me I have some Fumari Tropical Mango with a hint of sweet mint also about Fumari. So it's a little, uh, you know, tropical vibe we got going here, kind of. Definitely flavorful. Fumari is one of those ones. I think I mentioned it last episode. Very flavorful, and they're very to the T. And what they say the flavor is, that's the flavor that you're going to get. There's no hiding it. You know, say, oh, this could be tropical mango. No, this is actually tropical mango, and the mint is definitely, definitely sweet. Uh, I didn't do anything special that I normally do. I got my regular um, kind of rubber hose here, which is amazing because. For all those hookah smokers, if you know, like the basic, the t- different types of hoses you used to get is either the, the ones that restaurants give you, which are like the disposable ones that are plastic, horrible, uh, right. or you get that that old cloth one where like the kind mm-hmm. of like it feels like it has like springs inside of it, and if you if you bend it the wrong way after a while, it just starts busting through the the side of the stitching. Yeah, no more do we have any of those. We have. Uh, these rubber hoses, which they they last. So, right, but, yeah, rubber hoses, man, definitely, uh, definitely is, is is key, man, in today's you know hookah environment, man. Like you said, man, the, the old school cold ones, man, uh, the, the coil, the coil hoses, man. Those things actually rust out over time, man. I don't think a lot of people know that, man. So, you know, you, you have can to clean it. your hose. You have you to clean. clean it. Yeah, definitely clean it. It's hard to clean, but if you clean the ones with the coal, uh, with the coils in it. It actually, um, you know, speeds up the process of it uh, eventually yeah. rusting out. So um, it's always good to replace those, man. Even though they may look cool, man, um, definitely upgrade to a, to a rubber or silicone hose, man. It's the way to go. Right now, uh, you can't see. I have I have the short boy again because it's just more convenient to to build. Um, but I, and when you go to these hookah spots, I I've noticed. Well, after smoking hookah for a while that, you know, restaurants have the ones in cages because after a while, people get inebriated and they not, or just clumsy in general and they knock them over and they break. And mm-hmm. these things are, you know, they used to be expensive before it became a thing. Smoking hookah became a thing. Um, and I, for the love life of me, I cannot, I hate smoking out of those things because there is no room for the smoke to go. There's no room for the flavor to build. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people think like these smaller hookahs, uh, yeah, you know, they're nice and they're small and, they're, you know, you can put them away easier, but there's nowhere for the smoke to build. That's why I like the, the tall ones like you see in Mike's background, like mm. I love the, the flavor for those will always be perfect because there's enough room for the smoke to go up and down, the flavor to build, and it, you just don't get a bunch of smoke. 
Yeah, I totally agree, man. And, um, you know, man, I, I actually have a slight beef with like hookah, hookah bars in general, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of traditional when it comes to hookahs, man. Okay. And, um, you know, after, I, you know, I'm my part of my background is I'm, I'm a Navy veteran. So I used to live in the Middle East, man. I lived in Bahrain for over a year. So I got used to the hookah climate out there, man. And, and, and they kind of put me onto a whole new level as far as, um, as far as like quality, you know, hookah and stuff like that. So what you see in the bars here in this, the hookah bars here in the it's United American States. Ass. Yeah, it's very, it's very, it's very westernized, man, and it's just not the same, man. So, like, that's why I, ch- I, I usually just smoke at home, man, because, like you said, man, you can definitely uh, set it up exactly how you want it exactly. at home, and, and and you can get, you know, you get the flavor, you get the pulls, you get, you get basically just get the quality that you mm-hmm. that you're seeking, man, that you can't find at a bar that you're paying for. You know, you can just pay a little bit for some shisha, mm-hmm. set it up at home, man, and. Have a have a lot, you know, a way better experience in my opinion. Absolutely, absolutely. So, with all that, let's get into why we're here tonight. Tonight we are reviewing a classic, The Toy, starring Richard Pryor, Jackie Gleason, uh, Scott Schwartz is also in it. If you don't know who Scott Schwartz is, uh, he had a short career, but uh, he's also known as the kid in uh, come. Coming to America, the kid in uh, a Christmas story uh, <laughs> that got his tongue stuck to the light pole. So yep. that's those yeah. are your those are your main characters. Oh, and then um, Ned Beatty is in it too. Ned Beatty, man, he's been in like everything. In everything. Man. And, uh, Deliverance, recently, right, right? Deliverance, man, he was in everything. Man, he was in Life with uh, yep. you know Eddie Murphy, you know, and and Martin Lawrence, man, just he's been all over the place, man. Absolutely. Um, so the toy. Uh, was released December 10th, 1982. Wow. It had um, the wow. The budget for it was 17 million and it made 47 million. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, and so we're looking at 82. And so the first thing I thought about before we get into the plot was I can't remember, was this post Richard Pryor accident or was this pre? accident um because i knew i think when the accident happened he was in the middle of filming you know a project so i don't know if this is all the way post all the way pre but uh as i watched the movie you get certain signs that this was definitely post uh accident for those who don't know right look up that look up the accident with richard Pryor. but he definitely he bounced back he definitely bounced back man and uh, i can tell it was definitely post as well man you can actually tell Throughout the movie, yeah, especially, they get, especially the scene where he's wearing like the super, uh, the Spider Man outfit, yeah, you yep. see the, the the burns and stuff from the, from yep. the accident. Yep, yep. Um, so the toy, the toy is about um, Richard Pryor's character, Jack Jack Bates. He's a obviously black, but uh, Jack Bates, he is probably lower class citizen. You know, working class kind of thing, kind of kind of character, kind of guy. And off the break, you you see that he's going through trouble paying his mortgage, as probably most families back then and even now have troubles paying their mortgage. And he goes out looking for jobs. He needs a job. Uh, and the first thing I noticed about this movie was him at his house setting. Across the street, directly across the street from the house, was a plant owned by Jackie Gleason's character. Uh, that was his name, uh, U.S. Bates. Yeah. Directly across the street. So that was the setup that you kind of, you may, you know, if you didn't pay attention to that, you know, that was kind of like an Easter egg of what was getting ready to happen. So, anyways, he, he's trying to, you know, search for jobs, which back then everybody's looking for jobs. There's, there's job lines everywhere. He's trying to just find something. And the market is so bad that he takes on a job as being a a housemaid, a woman. He has to be a woman, right? You know, for this guy U.S. Bates. So you get that, and then eventually something happens. He gets um, he gets sentenced. Well, not sentenced, but he ends up cleaning uh, a toy store or a department store, and he's in a toy aisle. Mm-hmm. 
And then this is where he comes across Eric Bates, played by Scott Schwartz. And Eric Bates is, uh, he's off at the military school visiting his dad for two weeks a year. And you could tell that everybody is kissing his ass because they kiss his father's ass pretty much. And to give you a backstory about his dad, his dad is a, a rich, you know, real estate tycoon kind of thing that they don't say no to. He gets his way, uh, and he's kind of out of touch with reality because he's got so much money. So anyways, okay, back to the back to the store. So they're trying to please Eric, trying to, you know, let him pick out a toy that he can be happy with. Again, trying to make him happy with things. And while he's there, he comes across Richard Pryor. Um, Jack, uh, I said Jack Bates before, but his character is actually Jack Brown. He comes across Jack Brown, and immediately he's enamored with him, and he tells his handlers that he wants Jack Brown as his toy. So let's stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A little boy, a little white boy, wants a black man to be his toy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thoughts it's, so it's, far. Thoughts so far. That's um, you know, it, it's it, it's a crazy thought, but at the same time, you know, understanding where where Eric came from, what he grew up in, man, he just grew up around money. He grew up around a father that that pretty much, you know, snapped his finger and got every everything he wanted. So, his kid, you know, his kid is basically a reflection of him, Sorry. you know, being a you know a multimillionaire, you know, living in living in the deep south in, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's like, hey, I can I can get this, you know, just because my father, you know, basically mm -hmm. makes all the rules. And like you said, like you pointed out, like J Jack Brown's house is surrounded by all of uh, U.S. Bates's uh, plants and 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 all of his like, you know, all of his basically all of his businesses are just right yep. there in the neighborhood. He owns everything. He owns the um, owns the restaurants. He owns the uh, he owns the newspaper that Jack actually wants to work at. Right. But they didn't, you know, they said they didn't hire, he basically didn't hire any black uh, journalists. So, no. you know, he has that, a monopoly that, on the town. He has a monopoly on the town. And, you know, he's basically cherry picking who gets the best jobs. Jack, you know, he has a degree, you know, but, you know, they're not he's actually qualified. Anybody. He's highly qualified. He's qualified. Yeah. You know, he's actually qualified. And his last solution is, is taking a job as a cleaning lady. <laughs> Funny scene, you know, he goes to super in uh, U.S. Bates' lap, gets fired because he didn't shave his mustache, you know, gets demoted as a clean. He's still a cleaner, but he's down in the toy department working. What I'm assuming it was night shift. Yeah, it looked like, yeah, and, definitely uh, overnight. So Eric comes up. He's like, hey, I want the black man, you know, um, and then, you know, um, all, of the, all, of Jack, all, of, all of U.S. Bates' associates is around him. was like, you mean you want the black Wonder Will? And he's like, no, nah, I'm with the black man. The black man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was just, you know, I, I think the reason Eric picked the person over the toy is because, you know, Eric was actually missing that element in his life. You know, he didn't have a mentor and he didn't have, basically, he wasn't getting love from his father. So right. he's like, hey, this guy is playful. You know, he's a kid, so he... You just kind of saw him as, as someone to connect can with. Have fun with. Most level. Yeah, absolutely. And so then the, the two handlers come up to Jack and they approach him with this opportunity. And immediately, you know, this sounds like some form of slavery, right? You know, I want to I want to buy you to come work for my, my kid. Not even hire you. I want to yeah. buy you to come work for this kid, right? We actually brought it up. We were like, hey, is, is it, are we allowed to buy people? <laughs> exactly. like, uh, I think it's illegal. Like, you, exactly. But then it goes to South, so like, you know, times are so hard that Jack allows these guys just to give him a wads and hands, a hands full of cash. I mean, he takes the buy, right? Because times are so hard and he's trying to make this mortgage to keep this house. Okay, so mm -hmm. Let's paint this picture here because this is this is where it kind of if that if that hadn't showed you the, the type of class, you know, classism at this point, mm -hmm. something as simple as Jack being delivered to the house in a box. We've got so much money. We want you 
you we just don't want you just to show up at the house in a car or on a bike and ring the doorbell and come play with Eric. No, we want you gift wrapped, put in a box, and shipped to our house like an actual like an Amazon delivery package. Yeah, man, it had the styrofoam in there, man, and everything, man. It had like and three a little breathe holes on the side. Yeah, man, I'm like, <laughs> he was. I was like, man, this if if this isn't you know a definition of privilege, I don't know what it is, man. Oh my but, god, yeah, you took the words out of my exactly. That was it, man. I mean, that, this whole movie was about privilege, you know, or you know, on, 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 you know, against the wealthy, man, and yep. um, basically, how, you know, how they can use it, right? And then. You see, at this point, Eric has many handlers. He actually has a nanny, right? And then the butler kind of keeps somewhat look after him a little bit. But the butler, this is the first time I noticed that the butler was a drunk, right? Every time you see the butler, he's got like a cocktail glass in his hand. Right. <laughs> he's just and he's there. And he's, he's like 80 plus, right? And he's just he's just hanging out there, right? And then yeah. the, the maid or the nanny, she's... They're so annoyed by it, by Eric. Right? He's only there for two weeks. So I, w- I can only imagine what's going through the mind of this kid. Like, damn, I'm, I'm only here two weeks out of the year. My dad doesn't want anything to me. He pawns me off on some lady that's supposed to be my stepmom to take me anywhere I want to go. Then I also have a nanny. All she does is nag and complain and say, I'm going to tell your dad. Right? Why are you going to tell somebody who doesn't care? Or acts like he doesn't care, or so oblivious, right? I wouldn't say that um, U.S. didn't care. I just thought he was just way out of touch with being a uh, being a dad. He was so enamored by money and running business and owning people, he didn't know how to have basic relationships. Right, right, yeah, man. It, it, you definitely, yeah, you definitely, definitely nailed it, man. Um, everyone in that circle inside that house, man, it was just like. They, they were just so preoccupied with everything else in their own lives that, you know, Eric, he shows up from his private school or military school. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he he's the only kid in, the, in a mansion, basically. So, you know, he, he's just trying to, you know, you know, they just stuff him in his room full of all these like arcades and, you know, just video things. games. Things. things. Right. Yeah, material things. And um, he just wants love, man. He wants someone to, you know, just right. just. Just Something basically. that money can't buy. And what the funny part is, like I remember watching this as a kid and I was I was amazed by his room, right? If you're a kid and you look at everything this kid has, he's got like a um, bunk uh, like this crazy bunk bed, like or he's got a loft with a bunch of toys. He's got, like I said, arcades. Um, then he has um like a well, it was not even a power wheel, it's probably like a, a go-kart that this guy's just driving through the house with Jack in it. But so Let's start with the let's let's kind of build the relationship him and Jack start to have, right? Mm-hmm. So Jack is there for a paycheck. He has no idea what he's getting into with Eric. He just knows that these people have money. This kid's gonna get whatever he wants, right? Or he gets whatever he wants. So my and again, this goes off of relationships. Eric doesn't know how to have relationships with people. You can only imagine that. Like no one knows what happened. I mean, you can only imagine what's happening at the military school that he's probably not liked. You know, they probably talk about him on his back kind of thing. Maybe even a sense of being bullied. I don't, or he doesn't have real friends kind of thing. Maybe they're all a bunch of rich kids. There. So you can kind of paint a backstory with him. But he doesn't know how to have, doesn't know how to have basic relationships with people, right? Without ordering them around. And so a lot of what you see with him and Jack interacting is him telling Jack what to do. This is what we're going to do. And to the point where they played air hockey, right? And Eric scores the first point. And, you know, he's just on top of the world. Like, you know, I'm dominating. Like, I'm going to win this. Jack goes and follows up and scores a point. Eric wants to quit. Just the basic, like, things in life as he doesn't know how to lose or that's just part of life. You don't get everything you want. Right. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's just, it's just you know, I, I think, you know, even though that movie is, you know, from the early eighties, man, um, you see a lot of that even today, man, especially post pandemic where you see like the billionaires increasing their wealth even more, you know, um, 
you know, the, the, the kids of these billionaires, man, they have that same exact mindset even today. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not going to name names, you know, but there were sons of a former, you know, yeah, who kind of gave me those Eric vibes, man. I'm just like, man, like they probably had the same upbringing, yeah. you know, privilege, you know, just privilege, man. Just never, never knowing what it's like to lose, doing whatever it takes to win. I mean, just, you know, just not accepting no for an answer. I mean, actually, uh, a quote from that movie, man, from U.S. Bates kind of kind of explain it all man there was a scene i think it was a, the point where, uh, i think it was the part of the movie where he and jack were in the room with the dominoes and the, and the ashtray and he said money means never having to say you're sorry and um i think that quote it just resonated with me man because you still see that even to the into in, in 2023 man yeah. with, with with the rich with, with the rich and the elite yeah, absolutely. Um, that's also that's a funny scene. Um, Jack and uh, U.S. are having a conversation in U.S.'s private office, and he has those who don't remember dominoes. Uh, a lot of people used to stack dominoes up into a pattern, and you know, eventually, if you hit one, it should knock something down, knock everything down, and follow a trend. And at the end of it, you know, maybe something has to get shot into who, whatever it is. There's something always at the end after you stack these dominoes. But he had said he spent like almost, he spent a long period of time trying to put these dominoes together. And then of course, you know what happens. Jack, knock, Jack knocks it over. Um, <laughs> and so let's, let's talk about more the relationship with Jack and Eric. Cause you see Eric doing these pranks on Jack, right? You know, that every time you see Eric, he's he's playing a prank on Jack. Jack from the whatever that was in the bucket, you know, the old prank, you know, you come through the doorway, I'm going to pull the string. Right, right. And, you know, and it was pissing Jack off, right? To the point where at a certain point he had enough and he walked out. But then, again, the money aspect, I'll give, you know, U.S. is willing to pay this entire mortgage off. You come back and, you know, stay with Eric, whatever. So, but then you start to see, outside of Eric just being a brat, you kind of Jack is able to get to him and dig just a little bit of what's going on with this kid. And the obvious is he just wants to do simple things like go fishing, go to an amusement park. Um, he just wants a friend, right? Because Jack even tells him, gives him a lesson: is you can't buy your friends, you can't order your friends around. You have to earn your friends. Right, right. And that's yeah, kind that of like the, the, the changing point of the movie. Like you start to see these lessons Jack is right. giving Eric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that so, was man. definitely an important part of the movie, man. Actually, uh, I took that quote down myself because, uh, like you said, that was, that was like a turning point where, you know, I, you know, Eric, both Eric and his father started to really realize, you know, you know, there was something in the relationship that that, that that could be fixed due to, you know, Jack being there, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and, and you start to see that father son bond actually start to start to finally mesh together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. After it basically was non-existent before. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and it felt like, and let's talk about Eric and, and his dad's relationship because you see, also see Eric start to do things to get his dad's attention, right? From, him and Jack sneaking into the press, the paper press, and running these stories about his dad and just distributing them out everywhere. Stuff to get his, piss his dad off, get his dad's attention. To remember the dinner scene where he hits the sprinkler system while his dad is having these rich, you know, affiliates over the house. Like, and they're having like this rich dinner. Everybody's wearing fur or whatever, minks, and just talking rich people shit. He turns the sprinkler system on. And ruins the dinner. Right. Yeah, man. Again, was, it's the attention. Yeah, it was it was attention, man. And um, actually, that 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 scene, man. I guess the aftermath of it. That was probably I thought was one of the most evil pranks that Eric actually <laughs> did on, on Jack, man. Because uh, you know, he he locks him outside. You know, as he's still in the um Spider Man. Spider -Man <laughs> He locks him outside, man. He, you know, he's he's a black dude outside in, in this 
in this rich ass, you know, yep. estate, you know, and I guess the people outside, I don't know if they're the limo drivers. Yeah, man, limo drivers, they see him, <laughs> man. They're like, oh man, get that black man, you know. <laughs> You don't see him after that, man. I'm assuming he, I don't know if he ran home or he catches a cab, but the next scene is him in bed with his wife when Morehouse shows up to, to, get, him to, come back. to get him back into the, you know, get him back as a toy, you know? Yep. Um, there's so many, like, great, obviously, we, the racial undertones, but, you know, this movie is funny. Right, you know, Eric's character, he, he does what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to be an annoying little brat, right, with money. We see that. Um, we see uh, Jack Brown as a, just a man, a black man just trying to make it, right? And mm -hmm. the the sacrifices, or whatever, he's willing to do whatever just to, to earn a book. U.S. Bates, rich, out of touch with life, gets whatever he wants, and to the point where they hand out the paper and U.S. is pissed because, you know, there's some stuff in there that U.S. said off the record when they interviewed him that he didn't want published and Eric published it anyway. Right? right. And, <laughs> and he calls him in his office and he says, he, you know, he's not going to, he, he scolds Eric, but he places the blame on Jack. Right. right? Of course he does. And he's telling them he wants them to go back out and take back all the papers that they handed out. And to the point where Jack is like, no, we're not going to do that. Eric's like, no, we're not going to do that. So it's time for Daddy to flex. So he calls in, uh, what's the name, baby? Morehouse, right? Morehouse, yep. Calls in Morehouse to show Jack and Eric how much power he has. He tells Morehouse to drop his pants. Mm -hmm. Right then and there in the office. Drop your pants. <laughs> as, I mean, as signs of humiliation and to show you how much power I have. And what does Morehouse power, do it? Power and money, man. And definitely Morehouse did it, man. And um, <laughs> that was an interesting scene as well, man, because, uh, you know, that's when Jack, Jack to the side walks up to Morehouse and is like, hey, is it that bad out there? And he's like, yeah, it's that bad. But then that's a, you know that's the same question that Morehouse asks. I asked him. Jack, yeah. You know, was it that bad? Is it so bad out there that you have to um, basically disguise yourself as, as as a woman to get a job? You know, so <laughs> it's bad for both ends, but yeah, it shows you you know what what money can do and and what privilege can do as well, man. Yeah. Um, because yeah. a Morehouse, you wouldn't ever see Morehouse at a at, at a car wash cleaning cars. You know what I'm saying? No, no, yeah. absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we have that scene. And then, like, again, you start to get some of the, like, the life lesson scenes with Jack and Eric to where, you know, Eric is curious about girls. He asks Jack, you know, about girls. And what do you do when you like a girl? And he asks Jack about intimacy, which is crazy, right? But, <laughs> again, you're talking about a little kid. I mean, Eric had to be about what? 10, 12? Oh, yeah, I would say between 10 and 12, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he's asking Jack all these questions, and Jack is like, man, you don't really know. You don't know anything. So he schools him on that. Um, and then you start to see just the friendship build. Like, you know, the, the, how, how much closer they are at this point, you know, where the pranks have stopped, and now, like, we can, we can peel back, the, we can start peeling away these layers and have real conversations. Right? Yeah. Um, so this is their turning point, right? We, we've started to see that throughout the movie, but still, now you need to have Jack and U.S. have a turning point to where you have you have to open up the rich guy's eyes somehow, somehow, right? So we we go to a, a fundraiser U.S. is throwing for the K. <laughs> you know, he, he's not throwing it for the KKK. He's throwing it for the guy running for office, but he invited all the KKK members and the head of the KKK there to, um, for donations. Right. It's like a, it's almost like a double, well, first of all, the, the <laughs> newspaper was meant to be a tabloid to kind of look, make, you know, U.S. look bad. But then U.S. throws this fundraiser to almost blackmail the Democratic uh, senator into believing that, you know, he was going to actually frame him 
with this picture next to the uh, grand, you know, grand wizard, grand, of the- grand wizard, yep. And uh, you know, <laughs> put it out there, I guess, you know, to to avoid any type of uh, you know legal issue that he may have had coming up, you know. So yeah, man, it was it was kind of like you know the you know the son thinks a lot like the father in a way, and and it kind of showed in the movie, like, hey, man, you know. They do, they do, they, they are definitely father and son in the, in the way they think. Yeah. Um, so if, let's throw another layer on top of this because let me, back, let me backtrack just a little bit. The very beginning of the movie, uh, there was a, a, at the very beginning, you see the uh, Clan Watch Low Income Law Center on the side of the van. So that establishes Jack and his woman's, uh, rela- like what she does. So right. she's, da- she's after the Clan. And somehow she's she may be an attorney, she may not be an attorney, but she's she's on clan watch for low income law center. Okay. They show up at US Bates house and they want to bring down the, the Grand Wizard, right? Uh, but at this point Jack is at a turn. Jack is there, Jack is in the thick of it, and he tells her, I've got this, right? You know, don't don't interfere with anything we got going on, we'll take care of it. And you I think that Eric wants, I don't know how how into it Eric was to know what was really happening at that party. He just, but he did help Jack take the party, or Jack helped him. They helped each other destroy that party. And you see, you know, a big wild goose chase with a golf cart and, you know, go-kart and all that, to the point where U.S. Uh, goes like nose first in a golf cart into the pool. Now this is the fun, this is a kind of one of the funniest parts of the movie to me because he's in the pool and in, in the water in the pool still sitting in a golf cart. <laughs> I can't swim. And he but he's just sitting in the golf cart. He's not even trying to get out of the pool. He's just sitting there <laughs> talking underwater. <laughs> and Jack jumps in of course to save him. And he say he saves him, and then this is the whole. We're getting ready to, you know, come to come to some type of agreement. You know, you know, we're, my characters. Have, this is my turning point time, and they have a conversation. Uh, and you, well, first, U.S. is cleaning a gun. Jack walks in and thinks U.S. is gonna <laughs> he's gonna kill him for ruining the party, but he's actually there to thank him. That was actually probably a little humble. Uh, you know, with Richard, man, with well, the gun, Jack, man, you know, <laughs> gun, and he just starts, starts like, you know, just basically holding on to the wall, man. And, you know, he's just like, you know, don't kill me, he's the top, don't man. Kill me. You know, like, that was hilarious, man. <laughs> you know, you um, was like, I'm not gonna shoot you, not, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he thanks Jack for saving his life, tells him he owes him, um, and then he. He kind of comes to the, you know, you can, Eric listens to you. Eric, Eric likes you. And let's, let's back up real quick because there was a scene right before that where you see Jack and Eric walking through the front yard and Eric is doing stilts. He's on the stilts and Jack was guiding him and Jack kind of lets go. And Eric realizes that he's doing the stilts by himself. And then, mm-hmm. you know, the whole, you know, oh, I'm going to catch you, Eric, for you fall kind of thing. And they're laying in the grass and, you know, he gives him a big hug. He says, he tells Jack he loves him. Why his dad watches? It's gotta yeah. hurt, right? Yeah, that was. Yeah, I think you know. Yeah, as a father, that was, that was probably uh, hurtful to see like your kid tell another man like that. You know, he loves them, and he probably hasn't said it to him. But you know, I think I think there was like a wake up call, like hey, um, you know, to, to actually try to try to insert himself into Eric's life more and, and, and to want to do things with him besides sending him off to like six flags. I think that's like the normal yeah. routine that he, that he does when he comes from uh, military school is to go to uh-huh. six flags with fancy, uh-huh. fancy dates <laughs> and stuff like that. So, you know, he, you know, it actually once it actually forces him to be like, Oh man, you know, I could be, I could be the one showing my kid how to walk on these stilts uh-huh. or driving go carts and, yeah. Or air hockey with you know stuff like that you know so definitely um, a level of uh get the get the temperature thing going I'm cold um definitely a level of jealousy and probably curiosity too to wondering how Jack got so close well he got close because one you paid him to be close but then also he listened to Eric he talked to Eric he's 
it, the, the lesson Jack tried to teach uh, U.S. was just talk to your son. Just talk to him. So, but then, yeah, okay, so we're back in the office, and U.S. is telling Jack that, you know, thank you for saving my life. You know, I noticed you and Eric have a, a great relationship. He loves you kind of thing. And that's when Jack, again, gives him the whole, just talk to him, you know, and, you know, get to know your son pretty much. So we're at the point now where Jack has to leave because the, the week is up, right? So Jack goes home, says bye to Eric. You know, Eric, of course, is sad that his friend is leaving him because at this point they are friends. And then we have the Eric, in U.S., Eric and his dad moment in the Rolls Royce headed to the airport, <laughs> where U.S. he tries to throw him a lifeline. He's you know he's telling him when you come back, you know next year we'll go to Europe, we'll go do this and we'll go do that, and you know he's he's telling him he wants to do these things and he's actually going to be there to do it with him. But Eric is not. Eric is again. Eric is the kid and he's hurt. But he's not being receptive to his dad because he's probably more so missing Jack than anything else. Right? So, you know, his dad's trying to throw him, you know, trying to just open up this relationship. They get to the airport, Eric takes off. <laughs> I don't know how the hell he knew where Jack lived, but he, from the airport he took off and he ends up at Jack's house. And Jack Jack meet, you know, greets him at the porch and he's saying, What are you doing here? Like, you can't be here. Like, this is, you don't, you know, you don't, one, you don't belong here, but, you know, you, you can't run away from your problems. Another lesson, you start, yeah, you can't run away from your problems. Um, and you have to be, you have to, if you want a relationship with your dad, you have to give him a chance. Right. Definitely got to give him a chance. And uh, basically he was like, uh, you know, his, his father's already basically throwing an olive branch out there showing that he wants to, you know, make a difference. And, mm -hmm. and that was really up to Eric to do his part now to, to, um, you know, receive um, it. Yeah. Receive it. Yeah. Yeah. Receive it. And, uh, <clears throat> try to, you know, repair, repair the relationship. Yeah. And so then you see us, you know, well, Eric runs to us, gives a hug, you know, he tells me he loves them. You know, th this is what they've been building towards the whole movie. The big, I love you scene. I love you, son. I love you, dad. Uh, and then, you know, we have the victory music start to hit. And U.S. tells Eric, you know, next week when you come, next year when you come, you get one week with me and you get another week with Jack. Now, no one asked Jack if he wanted this week, but he just, he yeah. just says you're going to get a week with Jack. And yeah, Eric is, it's, it's crazy to me, man. But <laughs> even after that, man, it's still only two weeks total out of the whole year, man. It's like, man, what you, is this, man? Like, exactly. <laughs> you're still like, sending your like, son off. Dictators send, like their children to, man, and like they just get raised in another country or something, yeah. man. <laughs> but you got so much money that somebody else does the raising. Like, you don't even know your yeah. kid. You're right. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, and then also, at some point, he tells Eric, you know, you think I'm hard on you or I don't pay you enough attention. Like, everything I'm doing, I'm doing for you. I'm building this future, this generational wealth for you. Yeah, about me. <laughs> Eric doesn't give a shit about that. <laughs> Eric, just want, yeah, Eric, Eric doesn't care, man. He, just, he wants a toy, man. That's, right. that's you can cool. literally take Eric to get ice cream and he'll yeah. be happy as long as you take him. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Jack gets volunteered for a week, <laughs> the week next year when Eric comes uh, and then everybody's all happy. They pull, you know, they, they drive off into the sunset. Then another limo pulls up and a lady gets out and tells Jack, I've heard you've done a great, such a great job with the Bates kid. We want you to come and work with our kid. And this kid immediately gets out and shoots Jack with a dart gun. If y'all remember dart, if you don't remember dart guns, uh, go, it was the first nerf, it's kind of like a nerf gun, but less, you know, captivating than nerf right. guns. It was just, so, um, then you see Jack, you know, run off in this kind of crazy dance runoff montage, which and then the movie ends. So, I mean, the movie is—I had it written down. It's under two hours. It's a short movie. Short movie. And some of the notes I took was after about two to three days, Eric tells Jack he loves him. 
<laughs> but what's the I'm thinking, well, what's that to a kid though? Does the kid really, you know, he, he probably does love him because he's getting everything he that he wants that his dad's not giving him. Yeah, yeah man, it's uh, it, you know, uh, you know, it's it, it's a movie, but I mean, still like um, it, it, it does kind of show like um, it kind of shows a void that he was missing in his life, man. So it, you know, if he was able to say that he loves Jack, yep. That quickly that, that 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 shows that man he he was just full of he was, uh, up until that point man he was just feeling a lot of feel, he was receiving a lot of artificial you know love man right. in the form of toys like video games uh you know stuffed animals and stuff like that trips to Six Flags stuff that's artificial that's not really it's not really meaningful in, in, in like a human interaction man so. He saw that he saw that in Jack, and uh, you know that's exactly what he was, you know, uh, craving for, man. It's you know up and yep. up and you know his young, his whole young life of 10, 12 years old, man. He was he just hadn't hadn't received that at all. Just right. you know, basically everyone told him yes to everything that he wanted, <laughs> you know, and, and, and to how someone actually told him no. And actually, you know, there was one point in the movie where Jack was about to spank Eric, right. you know, and uh, right. He, Never received any type of tough love in his right. life, man. so that you know, to him, that 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 was love. That was exactly okay. Uh, how do you think this movie fares if it comes out today? Either they they keep it original like this, then you know they put it out, or they remake it. How do you think the storyline fares in today's society? Man, I think they can they can remake this and 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 it 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 would be as relevant today as it was yes uh you know back in eighty two man like mm -hmm. you know because you know you, you I think I think the class differences now it's even it's even far wider gap when you, when you look at like who the richest people are I mean they they have hundreds of billions of dollars now I mean, yeah. and, and back then I mean you you probably had a few handful of, of billionaires in the U S. And now there's it's probably at least a double, triple that now, man. And they're like crazy rich, man. And there's, there's no <laughs> way generations and generations of people will never family members to, to come after that will never be able to spend all that money, man. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think it's still relevant today, man. Actually, man, I think an actor who can play U.S. Bates. I was thinking about this, man. I think it, okay. Kevin James. Oh my gosh, he's uh, perfect. He is perfect, man. I think he, he, he is, know. you know. So, if you watch King and Queens, he actually did a honeymooner skit on King and Queens one episode oh, where he was great. It's perfect. You were, you, you spot perfect, on. Man. Perfect. Um, how does the movie have the same effect if they switch character? If, uh, if they role reverse, if there's a rich black family and they bring in like a, a white guy to be the you know. If the if the if the, the storyline switched and they does it does it fit or do you do you have to keep it the exact I same? Think, I think you can kind of play it kind of the same way a little bit, but I, I think the fact that you know privilege, man. I mean, it, it's still that part. That very, yeah, you, yeah. It, it's hard to really capture that if you reverse the 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 the, the, the racial element. In the movie and so today's standards Spot like we just keep it like you know basically keep it as a rich, super rich family i mean yeah. you know you can still capture the, the privilege part which which definitely still exists today um yeah, but uh, i mean you can, you can definitely use like a super rich you know black family you know um <laughs> but you know it, I, th I think if you do that man it, it'll probably be more Comedy on that side, then it will be more, um, yeah, I guess you know, t touching on, um, you know, a lot of uh, I guess political elements, yeah, okay. So let's rate this bad boy. So we do the smoke rings, um, uh, you got smoke rings from one to five, five being the best. Uh, what are you rating this movie, man? I, I gotta rate it a five, man. I mean, this is a classic, man. Like. I've been watching this movie since I was in elementary school, man. And I can still watch it today from start to finish. Um, you know, uh, superb acting. I mean, I'm a big Richard Pryor fan, so maybe I'm a little Absolutely. biased. But, I mean, 
you know, I, this movie, man, to me, it's a classic. Um, you know, I, I've owned this movie in, in several iterations, man, whether it be <laughs> DVD, it's now on my Apple TV. Like this movie goes with me wherever I go, you know, and, and, and um, you know, it, to me, it's a, it's a personal favorite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've, I've been thinking about this. Um, all the elements from comedy, the story, you know, storyline, comedy elements, all that. I am going to give it a four. Uh, the only reason why I didn't give it, make it the perfect movie, um, is I think that there was some parts of the movie where it felt a little rushed, but in some parts of it, it felt maybe just a like little over the top kind of thing. So, yeah, that's why I gave it a four. I can easily see why you gave it a five. But all in all, yes, um, Richard Pryor, I am a, a fan of his movies. Uh, this was one of my favorite. This is not the favorite. It used to be. And then I really, really got into Stir Crazy. And Stir, oh, yeah. Crazy, Stir Crazy, the element with him and Gene Wilder, I think, felt a lot better between him and Jackie Gleason. Oh man, yeah, man. Gene Wilder and Richard, man, that was, that was a perfect duo back then, man. Any movie that they were in together, man, was they classic. Killed it. They killed it. So. They killed it, man. Um, uh, did you know? I, I, it's a little known fact, man, and I noticed it while I was watching the credits. The cast of characters, almost all the way towards the end, I noticed a name on there at the bottom. It said Marilyn Gleason. And uh, I actually looked into who she was. Okay. She actually, play, she actually is. She was uh, Jackie Gleason's last wife before he passed away. She's in the movie as the senator's wife. Don't uh, when he smacks on the butt. No, so so when the senator gets out of the car, right? Mm -hmm. Two two women got out. One, yeah, the first one she got out was a secretary. Yeah, and that's who she he was probably sleeping with on the side. Yeah. Then his then the senator's wife gets out. That's actually yeah. Jackie's wife in real life. So. Oh wow. Yeah, man. Wow, that's I was dope. Like, man. I was like, I was Gleason. That's. I see. Yeah, that's not a. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, man. I, I like, had to look this, look into that one, man. Like Vandross. <laughs> so you only know one Vandross. I don't know anybody else. In that exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like one Vandross. All right, right y'all. So uh, check it out. You can probably. I think it's on. I've watched it on HBO Max. Uh, the DVD is available. You can just Google it. You can find it. Uh, Richard Pryor, Jackie Gleason, Scott Schwartz, The Toy. All right, y'all, peace.